everyone. My name is Adam O'Dell. I'm a composer, pianist, teacher, writer, and comedian. And in today's video, I am celebrating that shortly after my last video, we reached 1,000 subscribers. <laughs> So today I wanted to celebrate by creating a Q&A video made up of questions that had been posed in the comment section of my previous YouTube videos, questions that came from you over on Instagram for those of you who follow me there, and questions that came from my patrons over on Patreon. Speaking of, I would like to take a moment to thank those people who support me over on Patreon. They have really made this channel possible uh, over the last year. I recently moved out of Baltimore and moved in with my brother here in Peoria, Illinois, where I am teaching music. I made this move in part so that I can spend more time both working on my dissertation and spending more time working on this channel and creating more content here. So if you'd like to see more from me, uh, really the best way to make sure that that happens is supporting me over on Patreon. Even like the $1 donations really start to add up. So if you've considered doing that, now would be uh, a wonderful time. And of course, it's not expected, but always appreciated. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Please consider liking, subscribing, sharing, ringing the bell, uh, etc. But yeah, with that, let's get into the questions. Adam Odell is here to take your questions and answer them. Katie asks, why are certain beats or styles of songs so catchy? So I really like this question and I find it fascinating. And one of the reasons why I find it particularly fascinating is because science doesn't seem to have one answer to this question. A lot of researchers have given their takes and there seems to be a lot of crossover between what people have noticed. And there also seem to be a lot of weird outliers. Like some of those weird outliers are saying that like male vocalists are catchier. The longer the phrase, the more catchy it is. Or like showing more demonstrable vocal effort when one is singing tends to make something more catchy. And all of those things I find particularly unconvincing, mostly because there are a lot of catchy tunes that don't have that characteristic to them. The thing that most researchers seem to agree on is that there needs to be a balance between simplicity and complexity. Specifically, it needs to be simple enough that our brain finds it digestible and repeatable, but it needs to be complex enough that it's distinct, because if it's not complex enough, then it'll be too similar to things that our brain has already processed and moved on from, and so it needs to have that level of it being distinct. This phenomenon actually has a name, involuntary musical imagery, or INMI. So music aids in memory, which is why I still remember the quadratic formula, x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Even though I haven't taken a math class in the last 10 years. So while musical memory is certainly a great feature of the human brain, earworms might be like an odd bug of that system. Earworms are caused by repeating involuntary impulses in the auditory cortex, which is the part of the brain in charge of processing sound and generating aural memories. These impulses are most often activated by hearing the song in question, but they can also be activated without external stimuli just while the brain is daydreaming. This is probably why that simplicity-complexity balance is so important, because in theory, the simplicity of an earworm makes it easy to trigger, and then its complexity necessitates repetition, repetition, repetition in order for the brain to synthesize all of that information. So yeah, word is still out on what causes earworms and, you know, what causes songs to just be so catchy in general. Um, I find it really fascinating, and I might wind up making just an entire video on this phenomenon. But yeah, that, hopefully that's helpful, and thank you for your question. Devante asks, why are you so cute? Oh, Devante, man after my own heart. Real question, how did you get through the tough times of being a YouTuber? Um, so this is an interesting question because I don't think that that can go fully into the past tense rather than it being, uh, you have the tough times of a YouTuber and then you, I don't know, reach a thousand subscribers or something like that. And then everything gets easier. They sort of come in waves where, um, at the very beginning it was super exciting and I was really enjoying every single part of the process. Whenever I was doing it, I was really fixated on making another video. So I would produce a whole bunch of stuff really quickly uh, and I would get some good comments on it. But then there would come times where like, oh, I'm really excited for this video and it didn't get as much attention. Or there's a video that I'm like, ah, this is okay. And then it gets a bunch of attention. And, you know, there's sort of those times where there seems to be like that disconnect between what does well and what you want to do that can sort of be weird and difficult. And then there's also just the times where it's just really hard to get myself to do what I need to do. There are some days I'm really excited to write or film or edit and other days where I absolutely do not want to do that stuff. Really, I think the best way to sort of get through those tough times is to like set a schedule and be consistent because the more that you think about it as like a consistent thing that you need to 
work at, then I think it's a little bit easier for me to sort of structure myself around that. And then the other thing is just sort of give myself permission, right? Like if there's a day where like I cannot bring myself to write or I cannot bring myself to film or edit and I just need to be like, okay, so today is just going to be one of those days. What's something that I can do to sort of take care of myself and feel good so that tomorrow or whenever I have time, I can wake up and feel good and know that I can go in and knock out that task. Patience with myself is probably the short answer to that. Uh, but yeah, thank you for your question. Ashley asks, what's your favorite animated series and why is it Avatar The Last Airbender? Um, this is funny because I would actually say that that is my favorite animated series. Um, I suppose if you include miniseries, uh, it might have to move to the number two spot in order to make room for Over the Garden Wall. Regardless, it's definitely right there at the top. And I think the reason why uh, those two shows uh, sort of sit at the top for me is because I have a lot of appreciation for shows that sort of recognize what they want to do in the amount of time that they want to do them. And they don't try to, you know, stretch out uh, the run of a successful show uh, in order to just like draw out more episodes, right? There's this idea of like a, a contained story. We know what we want to say. We have believable and satisfying arcs for all of our characters. Like, you know, every single one of the main cast in Avatar The Last Airbender has a believable and satisfying arc. They each learn new things and sort of build upon the established rules of the show. It's just so brilliant and well-written and nothing goes to waste uh, except for, you know, <clears throat> that one episode and so yeah it's just overall it's such a satisfying show uh it's so well written and it again didn't go past what it should have done and that's always a thing that destroys a show for me but avatar didn't do that and that's probably why it's my favorite thanks for your question alex asks how are you planning for your videos to reach out to people who are not necessarily educated in classical music also how much is your content related to your in-progress dma thesis so to answer your first question, um, it's always been very important to me that this channel reaches out to more than just professional musicians. Um, I would really like amateur musicians or just avid listeners to really enjoy uh, what I do on this channel here. So I've done a few different things. I try to use humor because I find that, you know, being able to tell a joke about something makes something more memorable and at least is a little bit easier on the brain than just like dryly going through a bunch of facts. And then I also like to have sort of story elements to what I do, right? Here's this nerdy thing about music, but then also here's some way that relates to my life, because then maybe people can relate to it on a more human to human level, rather than theorist to student sort of level. And finally, one of the things that I'm trying to do to make sure that I sort of keep myself honest on that front is that I have made a TikTok. So if you'd like to follow me over on TikTok, I find that it's a lot easier to sort of interact with people who maybe aren't immediately in my classical music circle. I can answer questions there more often. I can just sort of generally post more often because I don't have to, you know, put so much into scripting and editing and making something work as a long form video uh, because I can just do something that's like 15 seconds to a minute. And so, yeah, for the most part, there's like a lot of <laughs> kind of random bullshit on that channel right now. But if you're interested in following me over there, I'm planning on posting more music educational content and music comedy content. And I like to interact with people. Uh, and it's really easy to do on that platform. So if you have a TikTok, uh, it'd be cool to see you over there. And for your second question, how much is your content related to your in progress DMA thesis? In general, I love talking about music cognition and evolutionary musicology. And the thing that I am studying for my dissertation is specifically how rhythmic perception is involved in music cognition and how how we sort of evolved to behave musically and behave rhythmically. So it's something that I want to talk about a lot on this channel because I find that it's a lot more relatable to many different types of music rather than uh, if we were to just try and relate everything to classical music and only talk about classical music. And so that's an important thing for me that I hope to include with this channel. Anyway, thank you for your question. Steven asks, do you have any recommendations for videos about connections between neuroscience and how society perceives music? Yes, I do. So there's a few things on YouTube that I find particularly interesting. Uh, of course, I'm hoping to talk more about music cognition sort of as time goes along on this channel. But in the meantime, here are a few things that I recommend. If you are are a little new to the concept of music cognition and maybe don't want to get really into the nitty gritty for it yet. I think that Ted Ed honestly does have a lot of really good videos about music cognition. Um, they are succinct, they're easy to understand, they're visually interesting, so I find it very watchable and even rewatchable. And if it's already something that you're nerding out about, I've left a few links in the description to a series by VJ Iyer uh, and then also an interview with Susan Rogers. Um, they're both really brilliant and they shed a lot of light on some 
really interesting aspects of music cognition, both in performance and in listening and in, you know, composition and imagination and all of these other things. So yeah, if you'd like to check those out, I have links in the description and I hope that you enjoy them. Yi Chao asks, music theory while playing Overwatch slash Apex when? <laughs> so uh, Yi Chao is an IRL friend. Uh, in fact, we co-wrote an opera together during my time as a full-time student at Peabody. And he is aware of my Twitch stream where I like to play a lot of Overwatch and Valorant. Uh, and generally, it's been a place where I've just like played games and had a good time and just sort of chilled and I've done it for fun. But I'm actually planning to use it a lot more in tandem with my YouTube channel. So if you're interested in seeing me play through some games and talk about the music theory behind them, actually this coming Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I'm going to be playing through the original Halo trilogy and talking about the music throughout that trilogy as we play through it. So if you'd like to check that out, I've posted the schedule here now on the screen and I've left a link to my Twitch stream in the comments. And I'm planning on doing that with a lot of other games. I'm going to play through... Uh, uh, some Mario games. I'm definitely going to do uh, pretty soon a playthrough of Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and talking about the music in that uh, piano in hand. So if that's something that you would be interested in, I am planning on doing that if you'd like to see me in a stream setting. Otherwise, those will eventually turn into video essays. And so just be aware that uh, I'm going to be nerding out about video games in addition to music theory here pretty soon. But yeah, if you'd like to check me out on yet another platform, that's where you can go. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for your question. All right, so that's it for me. Uh, thank you again so much for watching. Uh, thank you to all of my subscribers for getting me to a thousand subscribers. Uh, if you haven't yet and you would like to join them, please hit that subscribe button down there below the video, as well as ringing the bell so that you can get notified when my videos go live. Please also consider liking and commenting. Uh, it really does help out with you know that YouTube algorithm. And let me know, um, do you guys like the Q&A videos? Is it something that you'd like to see more of in the future? Uh, if so, also consider leaving a question in the comments so that I can get around to it. Otherwise, uh, green screen is going back up again soon. Uh, so be ready for more, you know, funny editing and long form video essays and things of that nature. Um, but otherwise, thank you so much. Again, please consider subscribing. Please consider joining the Patreon uh, if you have the ability to do so. Uh, and otherwise, thank you so much. And I'm really hoping to produce more uh, here in this coming year. Uh, and I hope to see you around. Peace.